Hi, my name is Emily Halford and I'm a data analyst working in psychiatric epidemiology. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to assess linear relationships using scatter plots, correlation coefficients, and regression. A very common analysis that you may be asked to do involves assessing linear relationships between numeric variables. There are several tools that you can use to do so, and those tools are all related to each other. So these tools are scatter plots, correlation coefficients, and linear regression. Scatter plots are used to visualize the relationship between two numeric variables, and scatter plot should always be a first step before further analyses are conducted. Regression analyses and correlation coefficients can both be used to statistically assess these linear relationships, and these techniques are closely related to each other, both conceptually and mathematically. So let's start by talking about scatter plots a bit more. As I said before, they're used to visually assess the relationship between two variables, and typically you have the explanatory variable on your x-axis and your dependent variable on the y-axis. Before you conduct a correlation or regression analysis, it's really important that you create a scatter plot first. This is because correlation and regression only work well at describing relationships that are fairly linear, and you need the scatter plot to see what kind of relationship, if any, is going on with your variables. The scatter plot also gives you a good idea about the strength and the direction of the, of the relationship, which is really useful as well. So let's look at some sample scatter plots. So both of these scatter plots show negative relationships because as x increases, we see y decrease. The relationship on the right is much stronger than the relationship on the left, and we know this because the points are much closer together and much closer to the invisible best fit line that would go through these data. As you can see on the left, there's much more spread and randomness with these data points. And this also means that knowing an x value on the right plot tells us more about a potential y value than it does in the left plot. And to be clear, I've added these weak and strong labels for demonstration purposes, but as we'll see when we statistically assess these relationships later on, even this weak relationship is actually somewhat strong. So we've got the same thing going on here as we did in the last slide, with one relationship much stronger than the other. The difference is that now we have two positive linear relationships. So as x increases, y increases now as well. So here, we're seeing a strong, meaningful relationship that isn't linear at all. In this case, we're seeing more of a parabola, and this is why it's so important to create a scatter plot. Um, there are all sorts of nonlinear relationships that can happen, and you really don't want to miss those. Uh, but however, correlation and regression aren't going to work well to pick up a parab parabolic relationship like this. So once you've seen a moderately linear relationship using the scatter plot, a correlation coefficient can give you a value representing the strength of your relationship. They can be either negative or positive, ranging from negative one to positive one, and both negative one and positive one represent perfect or extremely strong linear relationships, with negative one being a negative linear relationship and positive one representing a positive relationship. Zero, on the other hand, indicates that there's no linear relationship. So something like 0.1 would be a very weak relationship and 0.8 would be quite, quite strong. And if both your x and y variables are normally distributed, you can use a t-test to assess the, the statistical significance of this correlation coefficient. So there are two kinds of correlation coefficients that are slightly different from each other. Pearson's correlation assumes both normality and linearity in the relationship between x and y, but Spearman's correlation only assumes a monotonic relationship, which just means that the relationship is constantly increasing or decreasing, but not necessarily in a linear way. This image here depicts a monotonic but nonlinear relationship as an example. And Spearson, uh, Spearman's correlation also does better when there are outliers in the data or very few data points, so it's a bit more flexible. So there are several lim important limitations of correlation coefficients that are worth noting. First, it can tell you the strength of the relationship, as in how close the data points are to the best fit line, but not the magnitude. Um, magnitude being how much does y increase or decrease as x increases. Also, you can only assess relationships between two variables, so you can't add a third in there. Um, and at the end of the day, you can only get so much information from a single number. And this is also a number that tends to be a bit misleading. Given how t-tests are calculated, which involves dividing by sample size, pretty much any relationship will be statistically significant in the t-test with a large enough sample size. But this doesn't actually mean that the relationship is truly useful or meaningful, and usually you can't actually see a clear linear relationship in the scatter plot until a correlation coefficient is as high as about plus or minus 0.7. Um, with a big enough sample size, though, relationships far, far lower than that might reach the statistical significance. 
because of the fact that correlation coefficients can overstate the strength of, of a relationship in this way, we often square it to get an R squared value. The smaller squared value tends to be more intuitive and feel more aligned with what you see in a scatter plot, and it also comes with a really useful interpretation because the R squared value tells you the percentage of variation in Y that can be explained by variation in X. However, as useful as R squared is, it still doesn't tell us anything about the magnitude of the relationship. So now I'm just going to go into R to show you how we can run a correlation there, and we're just going to look at the um, relationships that we were seeing in the positive relationship scatter plots. So first, I just load in this data that just had the sample data that created the scatter plots. I'm not going to walk through how to create the scatter plots, but um, the GitHub repo containing this code and this data is linked at the end of the text version of this article if you're interested in looking at that. So we down to correlations. It's just one line of code where you just indicate using core test um, your x variable, which is the positive weak relationship here, and the y variable also for positive weak. And I'm using Pearson because it looks like the assumptions of that were met by these data. So we run that, and we can see um, a correlation value of 0.78, which as I um, mentioned briefly, is actually very high. Um, and there's also a t-test that comes out automatically with that output, and we can see that that's very significant. So there is a significant linear relationship in these data. And then if we wanted to get the R squared value for this relationship, we can just square that correlation value, and we see 0.61, which is a bit smaller and does seem to match what we were seeing on that scatter plot a bit better. And now for the strong relationship, we just do the same thing. Now we're seeing a very, very high correlation that's almost equal to one, which makes sense when we think about how close those data points were to the imaginary best fit line. Um, and again, of course, that's very significant. Um, we square that, and now we get just down to 0.95, which is still fairly high, but does make sense in the context of the relationship that we are seeing in that scatter plot. So I'm just going to go back to the slides for a minute. Whoops. Okay, so there's a lot that I could say about linear regression and regression analyses in general, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just focused on how linear regression relates to scatter plots and correlation coefficients. So regression goes a bit further than correlation coefficients or R squared by producing a line which best fits your data. So a simple linear regression actually still gives us an R squared value, but also gives a value that represents the slope of the line representing the relationship between X and Y. This measures the magnitude of the relationship, finally telling how much y changes when x changes. This information helps us to understand the underlying relationship better and allows us to actually plug in x values to the line's equation to predict values of y. We can still use t-tests here, but now they test the null hypothesis that the slope of the line representing the relationship between x and y is zero, or that there's no relationship there. So linear regression also lets us use multiple explanatory variables so you can see how changes in y are impacted by multiple variables. We get a separate slope for each explanatory variable, so you can assess each magnitude within that given model independently. You still get an R squared value in this case, but now it tells you the percentage of change in y that can be explained by changes in all of those variables combined. So regression does come with more assumptions than the previous tools, and the results aren't necessarily valid unless all of these assumptions are met. So these assumptions are independence of your observations, a linear relationship between x and y, as we mentioned before, homoscedasticity or constant variance of the residuals, and normality of the data around the regression line. So now let's go back into R. And we're just going to run quick linear models using those same positive relationships that we ran the correlations with. And it's really just as simple as we put in um, linear model and then our y value predicted by our x value, and then our data equals um, the name of our data source, which in this case is also data. And we just run a summary of that. And now we can see um, that we actually get an equation of our line. So it would be y equals 1.8960 plus 3.2711 times x. So we know that for every, um, un every one unit increase in x, we're expecting a 3.27 unit increase in Y. 
and we also see a multiple r squared value of 0.61, which is exactly equal to the r squared value we were getting before up here, which we would expect. Now let's run it for the strong relationship. So now we're seeing um, a value of 5.4 associated with the x variable. So now we're seeing that this relationship is not just stronger, as we saw um, from running our correlation and looking at the scatter plot, but there actually is a greater change in y associated with the change in x. And again, multiple r squared, we're seeing the same values that we um, were seeing before looking at correlation. So all of these tools can help us to understand linear relationships better. And while it is sometimes tempting to just quickly throw data into a regression model um, and just use that to assess linear relationships, it is important to understand what the resulting output means and to visualize data in a scatter plot before drawing any conclusions.